Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to another MediaTek Labs LinkKit tutorial. If you're interested in more video tutorials, technical content and our active forum, please register at labs.mediatek.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to use the LinkKit One to read out sensor data and control servos and a water pump. So for that to demonstrate, we will use our smart greenhouse. This smart greenhouse has several sensors. For one, we have the temperature and humidity sensor here at the top and a moisture level sensor directly in the flower pot. On the side here, we have a servo which can open and close the window and on the left, we have the water pump to pump water into the flower pot. On the side, we will have the Linkit One board, and on top of the Linkit One board, we use a growth base shield to extend the growth connectors, which we will use to connect all the sensor to the Linkit One kit. On the breadboard, we have the power management for the pump and the servo, but the pump and the servo is controlled through digital pinouts from the Linkit One board. So this is the hardware, let's have a look at the software. We will use the Arduino IDE to program the Linky One board. So we open our Arduino IDE and first we will make some definition. So we define the pins where the sensors are connected to. So the moisture sensor is connected to the A2 pin on the Grove base shield. The water sensor is on A1 and the water pump is controlled through pin 13 on the board, the Linky One board. So we see these definitions here. The next thing is the servo. So the servo control is done by a library which we include. We include it by uh, include servo.h. And then we define a global variable called my servo. So is it type servo, my servo. Then the next variable is a variable to uh, know if the window is open or not. So we have a global variable, is window open, and we set it to false because uh, the default position is closed. Next thing is the temperature and humidity sensor. This comes with its own header file, so we include that, dht.h. And we also have to define the pin, so the sensor is connected to the pin zero. So we do that here, we define that pin. And we also have to define the type of that sensor, which is the DHT22. And then we again create a global variable uh, by calling DHT, and then we set the pin and the type. So now we have a global variable DHT, which we then can call to do some readouts of that sensor. Arduino works very simply. You have two main functions. One is the setup, which is called once at the beginning. And then the other one is the loop, which is called endlessly afterwards. And if you want to call stuff in a known blocking way, um, you have to do it by comparing the time and if the time has now come to go into this function. And we do that by saving the local time in milliseconds and compare it to an interval. But for that, we need two variables as well. One to store the time when it was last executed, and the other one is the interval time. So it's uh, for the temperature readout, we have an interval of two seconds, which is 2000 milliseconds and for the moisture it's uh, 20 seconds so it's 20,000 milliseconds. Right so we defined now all variables all we need we have now set um, so let's go into the setup function. First we uh, start the serial output this is very useful for debugging purposes 
so we can write onto our serial port and we will see it appearing on the screen. So we start this by serial.begin and this is then started. Next thing is we define um, how the, the pin mode, so if it's output or if it's input. Because we want to read in from the sensors, we set them to input. So pin mode for the water sensor is input and for the moisture sensor as well is input. Then we use the global variable, my servo, to attach it to pin number three. So the servo is controlled by pin number three from the Linkit one board. After we attach it to that pin, we already can start controlling it. So we write zero, which means we want to set it into position zero. So these, you can imagine these are degrees, so it will be on degree zero. And later on, we then can set it to 90 or 120 or whatever we want. But the default position is zero. The next thing is we start the temperature and humidity sensor by calling dht.begin. This initializes the sensor and from now on it's ready to read out the temperature. And lastly, we define the pin mode again for the water pump. This is an output because we want to control the water pump. So we set it to high when we want to, the water pump to run and we set it to low if we stop the water pump. So this is the setup function complete. So once this is executed, we'll just have the loop, which will run endlessly. So this is our loop. Firstly, as I said before, um, to compare the time and if it's ready to go into um, a certain function, we compare the current time in milliseconds with our last executed time of that function and then we compare it to the interval, which means like every two seconds we will go into this if statement, and if not, we'll just run over it. So every two seconds we will check the temperature and the humidity. So how does that look? Here is our check temperature and humidity function. First, we define two variables float T for temperature and float H for humidity. And then we will read out the data from the sensor. So we can use the globally defined variable dht and call the function read ht and pass along these variables we just defined. This function will give us back a Boolean value, true or false. True if we could read out the data, false if there was an error. So if it's successful, we will print out the temperature and the humidity to our serial port, so we can have a look at the temperature. But we don't want to just read out the values, we want to actually act upon it. So we will compare the temperature if it's higher than 23 degrees, and if the humidity is higher than 70%, we want to open the window but only if the window is closed. So we'll check the global variable if the window is already opened or not. And if it's not, we will open the window. How do we open the window? Let's have a look at that. Another very simple function. First, we will uh, print out to our C report that we open the window right now. We set the global variable to open or to true that the window is open and then we will step through from zero degree to 120 degree in steps of one so from we set the servo from zero to one to two to three to four etc every time we change a degree we wait for 30 milliseconds this will make a very nice and smooth movement and won't just crush the window open and this is how you control the window, so now we can open it. But what about closing? As you can see here, if the temperature drops below 21 degrees and the humidity drops below 50%, we want to close the window if it's not already closed. So let's have a look at the close one. Again, same thing here. We set the global variable so that the window is closed. 
and then again we loop through from 120 to zero and smoothly close the window down. So this is the first part. We can already control a window depending on temperature and humidity. The next step will be to control the water pump by reading out the moisture level of the soil. So for that, I'm going back up to the loop because in the loop, as you can see, we have a second condition. So every 20 seconds, we will go into this loop and check the soil moisture level. And we do that by calling check soil moisture and we pass along uh, a value of 750. So let's have a look what that does. If we go to our check and soil um, moisture, we will see that the number we pass along is actually the minimum moisture level we want to have in the flower pot. In the function itself, we will define a variable where we can read the value into, and we define it by allocating a zero to it. And then we will read out the moisture sensor into that variable we just defined. And then again, we will just print it out to our zero port so we can see what's going on. And then we will compare this variable, but this value we just read out to the minimum level we want to have. And if it's lower than the minimum, we have to water the plant. And we do that by calling water plant with a thousand. So what does that mean? As you can see in the function, water plant, the variable we pass along, the thousand, is actually the time in milliseconds how long we switch the pump on. So again, for debugging purposes, we print out that we are watering the plant. We then switch the pin we connect the pump to, to high, which means the pump now will come on. We wait as many milliseconds as we said we want to, and then we switch it back to low again. So now the pump was on for one second, a little bit of water was pumped over, and we just printed it out to the screen. So now the circle is complete. We open and close the window, depending on temperature and humidity. And if the soil level drops between a certain level, we will water the plant. So that is always ideal conditions for the plant to grow. Let us now upload this sketch to our board, which is attached through the micro USB cable, and see the output and see if it's working. So now we open the zero port, we will see all what's going on. So we have the moisture sensor that detects that the moisture level is too low, so we will water the plant for one second, as we defined before. And then the temperature and humidity levels will start coming in and it will open or close the window accordingly. Again, so now the moisture level is okay, it's over 750, which is great and temperature and humidity are in good values as well. Now it's getting a bit hot, so it opens the window. It stays hot, so the windows stays open. Humidity dropped on the 50, window gets closed. The moisture level is detected that is lower than 750, so the plant gets watered. And this is how you control servos and a water pump by monitoring the levels of sensor data. If you're interested in more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and register at labs.mediatech.com for more technical resources and our active developer forum. Thanks for watching.